We'd better be moving along. Come on, gang. Boy, will I tip them over tonight. Hello, Tommy. Hi, bud. Drink for the crowd. Oh, here, Tommy. Bourbon for me. Make my scotch. Beer. A little more bourbon. Be a shot of rye. That's beer. Chug a gin, too. Gail, double whiskey. That rounds all sound. That sounds all right. Give me a wobble disky or a double husky or wobble do. Oh, give me a Coca Cola. <laughs> Where's Cleo? She's around somewhere. She's a grand girl. You'd better watch out, Buck. Cleo's plenty popular. You ain't got no claim staked out on her. You ain't married to her. Married? <laughs> no, I ain't never asked her. Boss, they say that five minutes with her and a guy's lucky to get away with his vaccination. Got it. What's the matter, baby? Don't you like me anymore? Sure. I'm just relaxing. Hey, honey, when I make love, do I make love? What are you asking me? I'm telling me. Say you love me, baby. Why should I? What excuse is a guy like you for running around single? Oh, I was born that way. Now, I'd like to take you away from all this. All this? Oh, I get you. Yeah, for a long time, I was ashamed of the way I lived. You mean to say you reformed? No, I got over being ashamed. Okay, what are you trying to do? Flag a train? Cleo, Buck Gonzalez is downstairs and looking all over for you. Thought you might like to know. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't look in here. Come on, let's go or you'll compromise me. Hey, what's the rush? Where's the fire? In your eyes, big boy, in your eyes. Hello, Cleo. How about it? See you later. Hello, Cleo. How about a dance? See you later, boy. Hey, let's you and I melt into this music. All right, sizzling man. Got a man, what a man. When he comes to town, the sheriff leaves the neighborhood. He's a bad man, but he loves so good. He's a wicked man. Thank you. 
What are they doing now? If there was music, I'd say they was dancing. Oh! You know, I always took what I wanted. I guess the boys will give me the laugh, but I want you so much that I want to marry you. Well, that's darn white of you. I mean it, honey. I want to marry you. Marriage? <laughs> That'll be a new kind of racket for me. I'm rich. I'll give you everything. Yes, everything I own. My ranch, the whole works. Certainly make it sound attractive. Then say you'll do it. Tell you what I'll do. I'll roll you whether I do or I don't. What do you say? It's a go. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. Let me get this straight. If I win, I don't marry her, but I get that strip of land on the Delta. And if you lose, you marry me. Yes, and I get everything you've got. Right. Will you put it in writing? Sure, sure. I promise. Wow! This is my lucky day. Took me. You're all mine now, honey. Well, what's happening? <laughs> well, 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 well. She's got him tow fry, arrived tow. She's got him tied, roped, and Betty for Randy. A Randy for Betty. Uh, she's she's got him ready. You ain't scared of me because they say I'm a bad man. Well, I'm a good woman for a bad man. <laughs> we'll get married right away tonight. I'll get to just the piece out of Edwin. Wait a minute, don't rush me. What's the matter? Well, it's gonna take me two weeks to get my trousseau. Your what? My trousseau, wedding clothes to you. You know, I'm a girl that likes nice things. Two weeks is a long time to wait. Oh, see what I can do about it. Set them up, the drinks are on me. We're celebrating, folks. Two weeks from today, Cleo and me are gonna be married. <laughs> with lots of action. <laughs> well, hello, Sheriff. Just the time to join us in a little drink. I don't drink with a cattle rustler. Oh, I thought cattle rustling was stopped in these here parts. That's what a lot of people think. But it ain't never stopped with fellas like Bub Gonzalez around. <laughs> That's right, laugh. Laugh while you can. But someday I'm going to get you and get you right. Oh, Buck ain't got nothing bad on his mind but me. Excuse me a minute, baby. I want to talk to the sheriff. Where are you going, Cleo? Be right back, boys. Say, I hear you're going to marry Buck Gonzalez. How'd you ever get him? Oh, I just won him in a crap game. <laughs> Open the gate and stampede these stairs.
I came here from the East four years ago. I don't know anything about Buck Gonzalez's outside transactions, but I can assure you, Sheriff, that I've kept the books of this ranch perfectly straight. Oh, I don't doubt you, Mr. Winslow. Well, I've been foreman here for five years. None of us boys know anything about this business. There's a car coming up the road now. It must be her. This is going to be a terrible shock to her on her wedding day. Yeah. Oh, Sheriff, awfully nice of you to take a day off to come to my wedding. <laughs> now, what's the matter with you boys? I thought you were going to greet me with some wild shooting. You're a tame bunch. Oh, pardon me, Cleo, but there's a reason. It ain't going to be easy to explain it on your wedding day. You don't mean something happened to Buck? Yes, miss. I'm sorry, but it couldn't be helped. Oh, show me where he is. I feel sorry for her. Yeah. May I offer my condolences? It's been a good deal of a shock to us all. Yeah. I made a bargain and I was going to stick to it. Yeah, I don't keep souvenirs. Maybe you'd like this. What is it? It's an agreement between Buck and me. Guess it's the first time he ever agreed with anyone. Why, that's his signature. Yeah, he signed it, if that's what you mean. And the sheriff sealed it. I'm not so sure. This says that in consideration of your consenting to marry him, Buck signs over all his property to you. Yeah, but he gets shot first. You kept your part of the bargain. You did consent, didn't you? I certainly did. Twice. Hmm. Well, then I think this is a matter for the law to decide. You don't mean that I... Well, that'll help pay for my feelings. Well, Miss Borden, after due deliberation, the court has decided that all the holdings and properties of the deceased Buck Gonzalez belong to you. You've acted in good faith, and you've done your best to fulfill your bargain. Judge, wherever there's a man concerned, I always do my best. Mm -hmm. Now, as one of the richest women in our state, let me advise you to look out for crooks. <laughs> you let the crooks look out for themselves. Well, what's next on the program? Well, the next is for you to check over these. Now, you check them over. Oh, I can't do that. You see, this is my final accounting for the Gonzales estate. And if it's satisfactory, then my work is through. What do you mean, through? Well, I mean, I've finished my job. Can you imagine this guy, Judge? <laughs> After he gets me into the big money, he wants to walk out on me. Oh, no, really. It's time for me to get back east. Say, listen, I'm going to pay you a salary that'll be positively indecent for you to turn down. Very kind of you. What do you say? All right, I suppose I'll have to stay and look after the cattle and the men for you. Just the cattle. I'll take care of the men. We've covered quite a few miles, Miss Cleo. Oh, I'm used to that. Only on the dance floor, it was my feet that hurt. I guess you've seen about all the ranch now, except the oil field. Oh, I was over there yesterday. Yeah? Everything suits you? Mm, especially that good-looking boss. Oh, you mean Carrington, the Englishman? Oh, is that what he is? Kind of thought that body looked imported. You gave him good ride today. Yesterday, no good. Uh, nice animal. That's Cactus, the fastest horse in the West. Buck was going to race him this winter. Just a little gun shy, Miss Cleo. Ride him with a firecracker and he'd beat man of war. Oh, yeah? Hey, didn't I tell you fellas not to shoot guns in front of that horse? It'd be all right if they wouldn't scare him. Well, after he knows you better, he'd follow you around like a dog. Oh, I hope he don't take a notion and jump up in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Got in not to bring Mr. Carrington back with me. He couldn't come. You mean he refused? Well, uh, no, not exactly that. Uh, he objected to coming while he was working on the oil wells. Oh, well, I'll remove those. The oil wells? No, the objections. <laughs> oh. I want you to pay particular attention to this. You know, I'm leaving in a few days, and you'll have to carry on without me. Was the company sending you now to Siberia? No, just Buenos Aires. If these gushers come in the way we hope, Gonzalo's heiress will be one of the richest women in the world. I don't suppose she'd know what to do with it. Do you know her? Seen her? 
heard her. Impressed? Well, I'm afraid she's rather like crude oil. <laughs> <laughs> Get a good chisel edge on it. Get it right out to gauge. Hey, handsome. Lady's calling you. Yes, I heard her. She wants to talk to you. Sorry, I'm too busy. He's too busy. Oh, he wants to be coaxed. Uh, uh, no. I know what I'm doing. Uh, what do you mean by shooting at me? I don't happen to be a target, you know. Not even for somebody like you. Mm, what do you know about me? Just what I see, and that's quite sufficient. Mm, you're easily satisfied. Well, what do you want with me? Mm, nothing yet. You possess an extraordinary sense of humor. Yes, and that ain't all. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I'm rather busy for this sort of chit-chat. Oh, English, eh? Huh? Yes. Do you mind? No, I rather like it. Give me room, boys. Put that 10-inch bit into the furnace. <laughs> Chit-chat. <laughs> you know, I like that guy. Well, you can hardly hope to win a man treating him that way. Oh, yeah? Say, listen, as long as he's drilling holes in my property, I want to know what it's all about. And you see that he gets over to my place tonight and brings his blueprints. All right, Miss Cleo. Check up on that guy. Hello, boys. Good evening. What about them 2,000 head of cattle for Chicago? All right, let them go. Yes, ma'am. Well, you look very charming. Mm. As good as an oil well? Oil well. Yeah, there's a guy dropping in here that ain't got anything else on his mind. Oh, Carrington. He's coming to make a report. After he leaves, I might be able to give you one. My dear, I'm afraid you don't quite understand about Carrington. He's a man, ain't he? Oh, yes. Well, that's all I gotta know. Well, what I mean to say is he's the type of person who would only be deeply interested in someone in his own social stratum. Stratum? What's that, something I ain't got? If you forgive my saying so, there's a certain amount of, well, background that you haven't had the opportunity of acquiring. Oh, you mean I ain't exactly a lady? <laughs> Never mind, our little bet still goes. All right, but I'm afraid you're gonna lose. Say, I'll make a forgetty of a sore stratum. Good evening. Well, we'll agree on that anyway. Come in. I brought everything you asked for. So I see. Well, uh, shall we get down to business? Yes, sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Drink? No, thank you. What, no vices? I'm afraid we aren't getting anywhere. Hmm. Did you notice that too? Go ahead, go ahead. Now, this map represents your entire property. This curved portion is the main body, and this is the undeveloped territory. Mm, we'll have to do something about that. Uh, these shaded areas are those indicated in the geological survey as being oil-bearing. Mm, you amaze me. Quite interesting, quite interesting. These circles mark the location of the wells drilled to date. As you can see, we've covered the entire field very thoroughly. Mm, isn't it possible there's something you've overlooked? Positively not. Everything that looked in the least encouraging has been taken care of. And I can assure you that all this property we're getting the most out of. How can you be so sure? Look for yourself. Why, you'd be surprised at the things that don't show up on a map. Not if you know how to read them. Everything on this property that's at all worthwhile is right here on this paper. Well, that's encouraging. So you do understand? Yeah. Come on. Why don't you release those brakes? Brakes? I don't know what you mean. No? Well, you know I was bucking Solace's chase, don't you? 
You heard of him? Yes, I knew the bandit. Bandit? Oh. <laughs> You're one of those guys with principles, eh? Kind of different, ain't you? Look here. You can't expect me to be very sociable after the crude way you treated me today. Oh, I'll admit I was a little crude, but you like me. I admire your conceit. I know. You've been used to dames that save pink tea and stick out their little fingers when they drink it. But I like you anyway. You know, this is the first time I ever came in contact with a woman like you. Well, if I can help it, it won't be the last. You know, I can be different if I want to. You ain't seen my better side. You're a dangerous woman. Thanks. You look good to me, too. Come here. What's the matter? Are you afraid of me? Afraid of you? Yeah. Oh, uh, hello, gents. I'm sorry, Miss Cleo. Oh, that's all right. You guys should never bet with me. Now, this kind of stuff is my specialty. You seem to be having a delightful time at my expense. Would you mind telling me what it's all about? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You see, these gentlemen and I had a little bet that you couldn't be made, made a... a fool of. Is that it? Well, you succeeded nobly, didn't you? I gotta get this signed, please, ma'am. All I need is a little more time to work on that guy. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. The trouble is, I'm afraid you won't have the opportunity. No? He's going away. Gone away? Well, why didn't you tell me? Where's he gone? His company is sending him to Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires? Mm. Well, you mean down South America, where the races are. I've been reading about that in here. Uh, is she a lady? Mrs. Crane Brittany? Yes, I should say that she was. Hmm, he'll be finding a lot of them down there, won't he? Naturally. Well, he'll find one he don't expect. What do you mean? I mean I'm going to take a shot at this lady business and you've got to help me. I'll do everything I can. It'll take more than that. First step to my education is going to be an ocean trip. To uh, Buenos Aires? Yes, and I'm going to put that horse cactus in the international sweepstake. Well, that's a surprise. Do you consider yourself a good judge of horse flesh? I don't know. I never rate any. <laughs> in this dump and the jade I used to work in. Not dump, this place. Well, it's the same thing. Do you wish a table? Uh, where are they taking the bets for tomorrow's races? Oh, that's in the bar, madame. Well, that's a good place for it. Uh, lead on, big boy, lead on. Why, who is she? Why, haven't you heard? Mm. You don't say. Which one of them dames is a lady? Never point. They're all model ladies. Yes, these guys must be gentlemen. They all got white shades on. Clothes alone don't make the gentleman. I found that out. Here you are, madame. Sierra Montezuma. Five hundred on Montezuma. Present the pesos on Montezuma. Two hundred on Bonnie Lassie. Five hundred on Montezuma. Oh, Montezuma seems to be head man around here. Yes, evidently the favorite. I'll put a stop to that. One thousand plasters on cactus. Mil pesos a cactus. Cactus, the American horse? Yeah. Oh, uh, waiter, give me a shot of Got steak. Got two cream to cocos, please. Yeah, that's what I meant. Vodka. Vodka? What's that, name of a horse or a drink? That, madame, is a famous Russian drink. When you think of vodka, you think of Russia. And when you drink it, you think of everything. Well, I don't need vodka for that. Oh, excuse me, permit me to introduce myself. I'm Vladimir Stepanovich Zanin. Oh, you don't say. Well, my name's a couple of inches shorter than yours. I'm Cleo Borden, and uh, this is Mr. Winslow. Happy to meet you. I beg your pardon, Cleo. Oh, save your dignity. It's all in fun. Well. <laughs> Say, ain't that the dame in the magazine? Oh, uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Crane Brittany. 
who's the bullfighter she's got in tow? <laughs> she's not a bullfighter. She's also a Russian. But I want you to understand, there are Russians and Russians. Mm, you don't care for him, huh? You're right. Mm, too bad. He looks like quite a gent. Gentle man. That's all right. I was just abbreviating. Oh. 300 on Montezuma. 300. 100 on Vice Squad. Yes, ma'am. 2,000 on Bonnie Lassie, please. Five grand on Cactus, right on the nostril. My dear young lady, aren't you a trifle over-optimistic about that horse? No, honey, I'm just being conservative. But Bonnie Lassie is a derby winner. <laughs> to me, a derby is just a hat. You'll find out the difference tomorrow. Mm, that calls for a side bet. Name your figure. Of course, if you want to be so foolish, shall we say 10,000 at prevailing odds? Make it 20 and I'll call it a deal. If that's satisfactory, we'll settle it at the track tomorrow. All right, I'll trust you. Oh, uh... Cigarette me, Kazakh. It's a pleasure to be of service to la blonde Americaine. Mm. Call your shots, don't you? Come, Ivan, we must be going. Uh, buenas noches. Same to you. Hasta mañana. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Don't think I worked in Tijuana for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> At the stables where the horses for tomorrow's race are quartered, there's a certain horse in stall eight that positively must be kept from running in tomorrow's sweepstakes. Apart from the money I should lose if that horse should win, his owner needs a lesson in keeping her place that she won't forget. Should you enjoy being richer by a few thousand? Now you interest me. You'll do it? Why not? And now's the time to do it. You get out here. Stop the car, Rogers. Stables aren't far from here. You may decide for yourself what means you wish to employ. It will be done. But uh, didn't we speak about money? The arrest tomorrow. Yeah, show me the silver one. Bien, madame. I hope you're satisfied with the guns. Everything else seems to be going smoothly. Have you heard anything about Carrington? I hope I ain't doing all this for nothing. Oh, he's here all right. I've made discreet inquiries. Think he'll be at the races tomorrow? I shouldn't be surprised. Oh, I hope you're right. You imagine me falling for that guy? And I'm supposed to be a smart dame that knows all the answers. And I guess the answer to that is that there's no one too smart for love. Good night, my dear. Good night, Winslow. Oh, hello. 
Madame, I'm so thrilled in seeing you again. So nice. Yeah. For one kiss of your lips, I would give half of my life. Oh, see me tomorrow, I'll kiss you twice. <laughs> bonjour, Yvon, bonjour. Présentez-moi, mm. présentez-moi. Présentez si, si. Uh, madame, may introduce Captain Dupont, famous soldier of fortune. Mm. A hero. Guide, madame. Madame, Lieutenant Mendoza, Senor Alvarez. How are you, boys? I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Well, it's not your fault. You tried hard enough. <laughs> Where have I seen your lovely face before? Same place you see it now. <laughs> <laughs> mm, there's one in a million, uh, figuratively speaking. She's that much talked about cattle queen, who was going to run cactus. Oh, yes, I've heard of her. They struck oil on her ranch. She's worth millions. Shocking what sort of people have money nowadays. Mrs. Brittany, uh, may I speak to you alone? Fletcher, I'll join you later at the box. I want to explain. Isn't that cactus? That's what I want to explain. Trying to carry out your orders, I got into trouble. I was unsuccessful. Yes, so I see. Sorry, boys, but this is private. Well, how's everything, huh? Cactus not sleep last night. Me think him catch cold. Caught cold? Oh, that would have to happen now. Come here. Jimmy. Listen, I'm not taking any chances around him after what happened last night. There's an extra bonus for you if you beat Cactus. I don't care how you do it, anything goes. Remember, you stand at the three-quarter pole and keep your eye on me. Yes, lady. Senor Carrington. Ram want to sue my nose for good luck. Remember, you are wearing the Lopez color. Give them on. Si, senor. Listen, Laughing Eagle. Remember, you're wearing my colors, so bring home the bacon. Uh. Mm, fancy meeting you in Buenos Aires. The astonishment is mutual. I'm glad we've got that much in common. Still keep on the brakes? Quién es esa mujer? No la conozco. Well, it's been awfully nice to see you, but I, I'm afraid I shall have to join my party. Don't skid. Yeah. Hey, friend? Yes. First, my dear. That's great. Was Billet's car here? Yes. Montezuma, of course. Oh, I thought so. Too bad, you're gonna lose. What's that? Who's going to lose? Yeah, you too. I bet you 50 grand, even money, that Montezuma don't win. What means 50 grand? Dollars to you, 50,000 of them. Oh, Papa, take her. Yeah, try and get me. Oh, Madame. I will bet with you. That's perfect. I don't be foolish, Cleo. I should say Miss Borden. I know what I'm doing, honey. I should say, uh, Mr. Carrington. Well, it's your money. Bravo. You're a grand sport. If I only had the right to lead you to your true greatness. Yeah, that ain't a bad idea. Hiya, pal. How about that little bed? It's satisfactory. Isn't uh, that your boyfriend with her? Yes, the traitor. Glasses. Certainly. Thank you. That's all right.
second. Connie Lassie third, running easily. Cactus coming up on the inside. It is a great privilege and a great honor to extend to Miss Cleobald not only our heartiest congratulations, but also on behalf of true fellow sportsmen, the world over. I am sure Miss Borden would like to say a few words to us. Oh, delighted. <laughs> this ought to be amusing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I had a swell speech all figured out on paper for the occasion, but I left it home on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly appreciate you throwing this party for me, and as far as the success of me and my horse goes, all I can say is, we came, we saw, we conquered. Thank you. I gave him class, didn't I? Eva, you seem to have money tonight. Where did you get it? Ah, that's my secret. To you, uh, la blonde americana. And to her millions, which will be soon mine. You are lucky, Yvonne. You have got what you have always been after. Eh bien, a woman like her should be proud of getting Ivan Bilado. Look here, sir. When you speak of Miss Borden, be careful what you say. Don't make me laugh, senor. You are doing pretty well yourself with the rich, senorita Lopez. I suppose her millions do not interest you. You swine! <laughs> Someday you will pay for this. And I thought you was a gentleman, fighting in a bar room, smacking around my friend. Your friend, eh? Yes, what's it to you? Oh, nothing. Only I picked my friend. Yes, to Peter's. Come on, I, Ben. My darling. My sweet. My lovely wife. Never mind that. I get all the oil I want. Darling, I just found out that it's you I'm in love with. You are the only one for me after all. After all what? Oh, darling, I love you, I love you. I must have you marry me. Oh, listen, I, Van. You're all right to play around with, but as a husband, you'd get in my hair. But, darling... Besides, we're intellectual opposites. What do you mean? Well, I'm intellectual and you're opposite. Let me tell you, I am an aristocrat and the backbone of my family. Well, your family ought to see a chiropractor. Say, so where 
Where do you think you're going? I don't think that should interest you. Oh, yes, it does. Well, I got plenty to say to you. Well, I'd rather you said it to that uh, Russian friend of yours. You seem very devoted to him, and you and I have nothing in common. What do you mean, nothing in common? Ain't I worth millions? And I climb on the social ladder, and I mix them with swell people? Why well, I can get anything money can buy, what more do you want? Certainly not your money. That means nothing to me. There are a lot of people who think the way you do, but you're sadly mistaken about the importance of your wealth. There happen to be a few things beyond the reach of money. Yeah, for instance? Natural good breeding, for one thing. Culture, for another. Oh, I see. You'd like to have my ancestors go over and come back on the Mayflower, is that it? No. I'm simply making clear to you what my own standards are and what I'm accustomed to expect from the people I associate with. Say, listen, when you've got plenty of money, you can get any kind of friends you want. You mean parasites, like your friend Ivan, Now, leave my friends out of it. Then leave me out of it, too. I can do that. Why do I have to like that guy? Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. Listen, Winslow, I gotta get a good name. A what? I gotta be a lady now if it kills me, and you too. Ain't there some quick way without a lot of red tape? Well, if it's social position you want, there's always marriage. Well, that's perfect. All right, you find me a guy with a good name, blue blood in his veins, and red ink in his bank book, and I'll put a deposit on him tonight. Well, there's a man not so active, but he's a bachelor. The legs were beautifully carved. Oh, Clinton Hungerford, he collects antiques. You'd think he'd last till I got him home. Number eight blank. Oh, I win! Any more checks, Mr. Colton? Yes, yes. Why don't you stop, old man? Don't worry, my luck will change. Bien va plus. All bets down. Are you playing, Miss Borden? Yeah, I want to take a crack at it. Five thousand, please. Nineteen red. Quatorze rouge. Any more checks, Mr. Colton? I'm through. Well, bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Place your bet. Too bad, Colton. Your luck was miserable tonight. Yeah, I'm broke. That value? Why not? Give me that. Give it to me. You've had bad luck tonight, haven't you? Yeah, they clean me. Sit down. I want to talk to you. May sound a little odd at first, but I want you to listen. How would you like to step into a fortune? Are you trying to be funny? On the contrary, I'm quite serious. I'll be frank with you. I came here to make a deal. A deal? Yes. The Colton name and social position for a generous fortune. Colton name? Fortune? Oh, I see what you mean, but it's out of the question. I couldn't do a thing like that. Ah. Too bad. Wait a minute. Who is she? Miss Cleo Borden, the oil millionaire. 29, black. She wins again, Morgan. It's a nominal gun. This is the most embarrassing position I've ever been in. I, uh, I feel like an idiot. On the contrary, you ought to feel yourself rather fortunate. If you'll excuse me, I'll tell Miss Borden that you're here. And if you don't mind, I think I'll have a drink. I need it. Yes. Help yourself. Oh, how 
how'd you make out? Everything's practically set. He's waiting in the next room. I'll put the finishing touches to him. Come on. And by the way, I might tell you that it's Mrs. Crane Britton's nephew. What? That dame? Oh, ain't this a hot coincidence? Lead me to him. My dear, Mr. Fletcher Colton, Miss Borden. Oh, uh, how do you do? How do you do? Well, you made a swell deal if you ask me. Mr. Colton felt a little strange about all this. Did you make it clear that this was uh, just a business proposition? Oh, yes, yes. Not that it's anything against you personally, because uh, it looked pretty good to me and all that. But I just want to let you know where you stand. Well, I think I understand. Uh, you're simply buying your way into society through my position in it, and uh, nothing more. Mm, that's short and sweet. I couldn't put it better myself. <laughs> All we need now is to settle the details for the wedding. Yeah, give society something to talk about. Because I'm going to be Mrs. Fletcher Colton of New York, Miami, and Southampton. By golly, uh, the new Mrs. Colton must be one of them there circus bareback riders. Well, one thing's sure, Michael. Life will be a circus around here from now on. All right, throw it out. Yes, ma'am. Storehouse. Yes, yes ma'am. Throw it out. And please tell her that with me are Mrs. Plunkett, Mrs. Pillsbury, and Mrs. Cranford. We'd like to see her at once. Of course. And with Mrs. Brittany and Mrs. Plunkett, Mrs. Pillsbury, and Mrs. Cranford. Mm -hmm. What's the fun? This is positively shocking. Oh, I think it's beautiful, but I wouldn't tell her. Well, I should hope not. There's a trace of one of my ancestors left. Oh, good afternoon, ladies. Charming of you. Won't you sit down? We'll have some tea? No, no thank, thank you. you. No tea. I suppose you came here to congratulate me. Mm, we did. We think you've done extremely well. Of course, when I uh, met you in Bonas Airs, I didn't think we'd ever be related. Speaking of relatives, Mrs. Colton, have your ancestors ever been traced? Well, yes, but they were too smart. They couldn't catch them. I don't suppose you'll want to stay in Southampton very long. And what gave you that idea? Oh, little Birdie told me. Hmm. Birdie must have been a little cuckoo. I'm afraid you're going to find it rather quiet here, after the way you're used to living. Uh, don't let that worry you. I expect to put life in the old jet. I mean the old place. Dear, in what way? Well, you see, uh, this being the social season down here, I figured I'd toss a few parties to a select crowd. You're invited. Because I realize you're an ambitious young woman. I can see exactly why you married my nephew. I know what you have in mind. Go right ahead. I'm resting. You know, I could give you some good advice if you asked me. Well, you don't ask your enemy how to win the war. You're suggesting I'm your enemy? Well, you certainly didn't come here as a friend. Let me tell you, you're only wasting your time. Oh, so you intend to force yourself upon us? Force myself on who? Listen, sister. Don't forget, I'm Mrs. Fletcher Colton of New York, Miami, and Southampton. You, you, oh, I'll drive you out of Southampton. I wonder if they'll ever come back. Well, after they hear what I'm going to do, they'll fight to come back. My dear, what are you up to now? Something I've been planning for a long time. Yes? What is it? I'm going to give them some high-class entertainment that'll put another row on the 400. Yes, but what sort of entertainment? Oh, nice, clean entertainment. I'm going to throw them an opera. Opera? Yeah, and you've got to make arrangements right away to get me a tenor to play Samson. Do you mean to tell me that you're going to attempt Samson and Delilah? Say, listen, I'll attempt anything once. And what's more, I'm going to sing Delilah. But... I got a lot of respect for that dame. There's one lady barber that made good. Remember, Donovan, this is no ordinary case. It requires diplomacy and tact. Well, I've been a successful private dick for 15 years. If I had my due, I'd be police commissioner. 
Yes? Mrs. Brittany is here. Have her come in. Step out a few minutes, Donovan. Sure. Come right in, Mrs. Brittany. Thank you. Everything is working out nicely. I've instructed the detective. I'm expecting Ivan Volodov here any minute. He arrived from Buenos Aires this morning. Splendid, Brash. You always were thorough. You know, of course, that this will be an expensive undertaking. I'll spare no cost to disgrace that woman and drive her out of Southampton. Good. And if we can depend on Volodov to do his part, the result should be even better than that. Since it's known that Volodov formally courted her, and with the evidence we hope to get, we'll have sufficient to demand a divorce for Colton. You don't need to worry about Ivan Volodov going through with it. I happen to know what sort of rodent he is. What is it? Mr. Volodov is here. Send him in. Mr. Brash, I'm Ivan Velodov. How do you do? Uh, you know Mrs. Brittany? Of course I do. I had the pleasure of knowing Miss Brittany quite well. Send Donovan in. It was very charming of you to send for me. Only because the situation demands your particular talents. Now this is the plan. Listen carefully, Donovan. You too, Mr. Velodov. Mrs. Colton is giving an elaborate entertainment on the Colton estate on the night of August 17th. I think that's Saturday night. Let's see. Yes. Donovan, I want you. Mr. and Mrs. Pillsbury. How lovely of you to have included us. Charming of you to come. How do you do? How do you do? All right. Yeah. Mrs. Crane Brittany. Delighted to see you again, my dear. You look perfectly stunning. Ha, ha, ha. The Earl of Stratford. A real Earl. If Carrington could only see me now. Where did you come from? England. You mean this title stuff is on the level? It's genuine? Of course. May I have the pleasure of the first dance? It would be a privilege and an honor to dance with the Earl of Stratton. Isn't there some place we can be alone? There are so many things I want to talk to you about. So many things you'll have to answer for, too. All right. <laughs> Where shall we go? Right this way. <laughs> Colton, <laughs> may I see you a minute, please? Why, certainly. Pardon me, gentlemen. Yeah. About this IOU, you promised to settle up with me two weeks ago. I must have the money tonight. Tonight? Why, I don't see how I can... Well, then, if you don't, I'll just have to approach Mrs. Colton for it. No, 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 don't disturb her, Rand. I'll get it for you tonight, without fail. Those are the windows of her room. I get you. And you better keep your eye on that Indian. We might find out something interesting about them. Say, when this guy Ivan gets through with her, we'll have plenty. Well, I suppose I have myself to blame for losing you. How on earth was I to know that you really cared for me? Couldn't you tell out at the ranch that I did? Don't you think your method of showing it was a little uh, unusual? Shooting off my hat and roping me like a steer? Do you know you might have killed me? I'll admit I was a little uncouth, but uh, you did like me. You know I did. But I tried to conceal it the best way I could. Mm, hold it out on me, huh? Those are the windows of her room. Get in there while the entertainment is on, so you'll be there when she gets back. Don't worry. And be sure and get her in front of the window so I can see you at the right time. You will see plenty, my friend. You see, I want to get in the social register, and you insinuated that I wasn't exactly a lady. But I'm surprised. Yeah, you're full of surprises yourself. You know, I didn't know you were nobility. I had no title then. I meant to tell you that night in Buenos Aires that I was going home to straighten out some family affairs. I meant to tell you that I, I was mad about you. Always have been. You've got to believe that. Mm, I didn't say you could kiss me. Remember you once told me to release my brakes? Yeah, but why did you wait so long? Well, I'm not going to wait any longer. I love you. We've got to find some way out of this. 
why it been lauded. It'll have to be arranged. <coughs> I'm sorry, madame. I am so sorry, madame. You're sorry? What have you got to be sorry about? Remember, you only have a half an hour to dress, make up, vocalize, uh, warm up the voice. Oh, yes, honey, that's right. I forgot. We're putting on an opera tonight. Best of success to you, my dear. With you here, that'll be easy. I've been looking for you everywhere. Did she give you the check? No. But I must have it tonight. I'm sorry, but Mrs. Colton has definitely refused to pay any more of your gambling debts. This is an unusually large sum. You may tell Mrs. Colton there is no sum too large to pay for the name I've given her. Even so, I think she's been very generous to you. Did you get it? No. But I will. I'll go upstairs and get it. Wait right here till I get back. That's a very delicate note, madame. I'm afraid you are taking the worst way to get there. Well, I want to get there in the worst way. Oh. Haven't you got my dress hooked yet? Ma madame, you we go this way and that way. I can do nothing. All right, we'll try it again, please. <clears throat> Between the two of you, you're driving me crazy. Oh, I'll smack Oh, madam. Can I do anything for you, sir? No, thanks, Thomas. Right. You mustn't scream. Think of your voice. Give me the A. Give me the A. Oh, stop that. Blow on that thing. I know the whole alphabet. Please hurry. You're on in a minute. In a minute? Well, I ain't ready. They'll have to wait. They can't wait. They can't stretch the music. Well, they'll have to stretch it or I'll go crazy. <laughs> How can I sing when you got me in a mood like this? Oh, please, madame. You must be calm. You mustn't shout. Who's shouting? You must say you're on. You're on now. Oh, I'm on, huh? Well, how am I doing? Oh, oh please, madame. Give me the A. Hey. Give me the A.
He insists that he must have that money tonight. Expensive husband, huh? All right, give it to him, but this is the last time. Very well. Oh, you can go. Canada. What is it, Tao? Come quick. Mr. Colton, him hurt. He's what? Yes, lady, in your room. Oh. Where are you going, madame? The intermission is almost over. Well, you tell him to wait till I get back. But, madame... Do as I say. <laughs> See if there's any money in his pocket. No money, lady. Wait outside that door, let no one in. So that's where you're hiding. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not hiding. I just came to pay you a visit. Yeah, and left your calling card. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, I don't understand. Well, come here and I'll show you. How terrible. But, darling, I know nothing of this. Don't darling me. You know you did it. Oh. So you are a very clever woman. You have put your husband out of your way and you want to blame it on me. Well, you have done this and you are going to pay for it. I'm going. Well, you don't. You're going to stay here and face the music. All right, I'm going to stay. And I'm going to tell everyone you did it. I saw you. Why, well, you low down sneaking. And if you want to save your life, you better come with me. Take your filthy hands off me. Let me go, take it. What do you want? Donovan's the name, and that's the story. Oh, you just what's needed. Come on in. Are you alone? Not exactly. Well, in that case, I'd like to see your paramour, Mr. Ivan Villardo. Are you trying to be funny? Hey, listen, I'm an old hand at this game. Mr. Colton. Yes. Whose gun is that? I think it's mine. That's all I want to know. This is murder. You're not insinuating that I did it. You'll have to tell your story to the DA. Say, so listen, you. Just a minute. What's up? Nothing. Nothing. It's all right. I'll take care of everything. Oh, boys, come up here. Oh, yeah. Tell you, when I first came into this room, he was lying there just as you see him. Yes, yes, I know. Don't let anyone out of this house. Right. You search the grounds. What has happened? It's Mr. Colton. What has she done to my nephew? Well, madam, my theory of the case is murder. Murder? murder. Don't let anyone in here. Oh. Very good, sir. Oh. Why didn't you listen to me? I knew something like this would happen if you married that dreadful woman. You came here. You forced yourself upon us. I swore I'd drive you out of Southampton. And now you've killed my nephew. I wouldn't be too sure about that if I were you. Well, you want to walk or ride, lady? I never walk when I can ride, and when I ride, it won't be with you. You're coming with me. You're not taking this lady anywhere. Here's the man you want. Huh? And we found the Indian over him with this knife. We tried to make him talk. You killed Colton. It's a lie. Colton shot himself. We'll let the courts decide that. He meant that tried to kill horse, too. 
Come here, you. Why, you double cross. I didn't know it was your horse. I needed money. She paid me to do that. Why, it's preposterous. The man's lying. You are lying. You also paid me to come here from Buenos Aires and help you to disgrace her. The man's insane. I believe him. He ain't got brains enough to figure this thing out himself. Well, I won't be insulted by a person like you. Now, don't lose your temper. I'll help you find it. You certainly figured a swell way to drive yourself out of this town. I'll let the law take its course. Let's go. to put my heart and soul in my dancing to keep the wolf from the door but now i'm a lady don't have to dance anymore i'd flirt with handsome men and ask them no questions i met the best and the worst but now i'm a lady i see their pedigrees first Let me say, there is many a boyfriend that knew me well. But today, there's the guys in the army of my forgotten men. Oh, I used to play around without any conscience. I just broke hearts, left and right. But now I'm a lady. Learn to be more polite. Who is it? Don't be alarmed, my lady. It's only her husband, the Earl of Stratton. Just a minute, there. But, my dear, we'll have to hurry or we'll miss the boat. You take it easy, honey. You'll last longer. Hidey ho, baby, I'm going places. I've made my plans. Hidey ho, love is dealing me aces. By step I hit the top of the ladder. It was a dangerous climb. But now I'm a lady. Come up and see me sometime. 